Hello again, Lock Picking Paul here. And what I've got is a couple of 3D printed um, disc container picks, which are designed by uh, a guy called Talonpick, who uh, has his own amazing YouTube channel with some fantastic lock picking on it. Um, and I'll put links to everything I'm going to talk about in the description below, because I'm going to go through these tools and uh, how, to, how to put them together, because when you print them, obviously you don't get all the metal bits. So you've got to make all the metal components for these, which isn't too hard. Um, I ended up uh, doing my own thing and working out how to do it myself, which I made life a little bit harder for myself. Certainly I've learned a few lessons in the process of doing it. Um, but it's been very rewarding to, uh, to build a pick pretty much from scratch, which uh, someone very kindly printed for me. Uh, so that was Talan through... Uh, a guy called Nigby on the UK Locksport Forum who sort of collected up the list of people who wanted a set of these picks. And that was done over the holidays. And uh, Talan very generously produced also a, a disking tray, if you like, to put discs in for gutting. I wasn't expecting that. It's really very nice of him. So thank you very much for all of these bits and bobs. Um, they've been a real pleasure to use so far, uh, as I hopefully you're about to see. So... What there are is effectively, I think what Talon calls the front and the rear wheel drive versions. This is a front tensioning pick, uh, much more sort of traditional, a bit like the um, the Sparrows pick, uh, although it's got some advantages over that, and I'll go through those in a minute. And this is the rear wheel drive, so you tension this from the back. Um, and I'm going to set this up as an Abloy Classic pick. Now I'm still working out... Um, the pick tips for this i've got the tensioning sorted but not so much the uh, the picking crescent is not quite right so that will be a video for another day but uh work continues on that now this what makes this pick special i think is the collar this collar here and it allows you to set the standoff between the pick and the face of the lock um, and it's it means that the pick always sits squarely on the lock um, at just the right height and it makes a huge difference to being able to pick a lock in the hand. It's also got another advantage. It's extremely light and being made of plastic, quite rigid plastic. So when you go into a gate on a lock, you get a really positive click out of a gate. So if you were learning on a pick like this, I think it'd be quite a lot easier. So hopefully that will, uh, I'll demonstrate that. We'll see. Let's get uh, my trusty Zarka out. That's more or less right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to gut the lock. I'm going to gut the pick. So, oh, hang on, I didn't zero that. <laughs> Let's make life easier for ourselves. Right. Right, disc one is going to be a zero, so I'm going to, yeah, leave that. That's a zero, let's leave that. go very very quick and easy all right let's take this apart and have a look at what goes into putting it together and the bits that are needed so take the collar off first things first all of the screws the grub screws and the nuts are m3 um and I, I've got links to Amazon um, I, just because basically I live right next to the, the depot, the Amazon depot. Um, and if I order in the morning, I get them in the afternoon. I'm fairly impatient. So you get a, uh, the uh, grub screws are eight millimeters long, three millimeter thread. And uh, the three millimeter nuts just the standard size nuts 
slot through the top of those slots and the screws through the side. So that's a really fantastic design in terms of robustness. Just, I love the thinking that went into this. The picking tip is an ejector pin. Let's zoom in on that. So this one, it's I've profiled it so it's got like little divots in the middle, so it slots through some of the profile discs. Got a little bit of finishing to do on this, but it picks well enough as you see. And I, all I've done is I've ground a standard ejector pin down into a flat profile on a uh, on a belt sander. Hence the horrible state of my hands. Um, that's really all there is to the tip. It's a 1.5 millimeter shaft. The on the parts that Talan um, puts on his page, I think he shows a 1.6 millimeter ejector pin. I didn't find any of those, um, but because I was making my own tools, 1.5 millimeters suited me better. I don't have a 1.6 millimeter drill bit. I do have a 1.5 millimeter drill bit, so that's what I used. All of the work was in the tensioning tip. Um, I made mine from a piece of solid stainless bar, which if I had my time over again, I absolutely would not do. It was murder to make. Um, I wanted a 1.5 millimeter hole at the end to act as a support for the pick. I wanted that pick to be com completely rigid all the way through. But I was thinking about it since I've made this, there is a better way. But let's just show you how this uh, fits in here. There are grub screws that go down through these holes in the, in the tensioning handle. Just three of those, just loosen those off. And it slots down in that hole there and the nuts slot in down these holes here. So this is this is the piece of stainless bar. Now <laughs> so I, I first things first, if you try and drill a one mil, 1.5 millimeter hole through the center of a piece of stainless bar on a lathe, even with coolant, that thing gets hot. Um, and I went too fast. And uh, when you go too fast on a lathe, sadness is what results. This is the first piece I made. And this thing just heated up and eventually my bit snapped, snapped in here and just wrecked it. There's quite a lot of work in that because I'd turned down the, the stainless bar already. What I would do in future is I'd start with some stainless tube, minimum of one millimeter wall thickness, um, maybe one and a half if you can get it. Um, and then what I'd do is either stick a nylon dowel down the center of the hole or even fill it with some um, fiberglass resin and then drill through the center of the fiberglass resin with a 1.5 millimeter hole and you'd have a much simpler um, a much simpler picking nose made because all you've got to do is basically cut cut down and cut across with um, a fine hacksaw or even a file to get the to get the, the picking tensioner um, a much easier way to make this this took ages to make and I think I could make the tube version in 30 minutes without any real trouble. So, you know, you do something like that and you learn from it. That said, it picks well enough. Um, so hopefully that is of interest and maybe of some use to someone who's about to assemble their own. And if you haven't got one and you don't have a disc detainer pick, I would absolutely recommend this. Skip the Sparrows one, go grab this one. Get the files and print them off. Like I say, I'll put all of the links in the description. I think this thing needs to see the light of day more more broadly. It's so good. And uh, Talan and Nigby for uh, getting this to me and collecting everything up. A sincere thanks. This is a really nice pick. And that's it. Enjoy your picking. Cheers.